Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty powerful little mini PC from B-Link. This just happens to be one of their most powerful mini PCs to date. And it's based on their GTR line. Now in some publications I've seen this called the GR5, but you know, I've actually reviewed the GR5 in the past. And that was powered by an Intel CPU. But when it comes to this new model, it's actually rocking a much more powerful CPU. This has the Ryzen 9 5900HX. And when I pull this out, you'll see on the side of the unit, it's marked GR9. So that's exactly what I'm going to be calling it. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the all-new B-Link GR9 Ryzen-powered mini PC. I've always been a big fan of B-Link's GTR cases. They've used these on a few in the past, but this one is a bit different. On the top here, we have an AMD logo that says Let's Play, and this is actually backlit with a white LED. Now inside of the box, you're going to receive a mounting bracket, you're going to get your 90 watt power supply, a 6 foot HDMI cable, and of course, the PC itself. When it comes to I.O., up front here we have a single USB 3.0 port and a full function USB Type-C port. Unfortunately, since this is using an AMD CPU, it's not a Thunderbolt port, but it does support display out. Now, taking a look at each side, there's not much going on, but we do have a bit of ventilation. And moving around back, we have our power input. Dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, a full size display port, full size HDMI, two more USB 3.0 ports, and two USB 2.0 ports. So, overall, we do have a decent selection of I.O. when it comes to these mini PCs, but uh, where this thing really shines are the internal specs, because this is actually using the Ryzen 9 5900HX. We've got eight cores, 16 threads, with a base clock of 3.3 and a boost up to 4.6. I've tested this APU in the past, and for a mobile chip, it's an absolute beast. This is a 45 watt part, but we can take it up a bit higher, and I'm really eager to see what they have it set at right out of the box. When it comes to graphics, this is using the Radeon 8 at 2100 megahertz. We've got 32 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. It uses SODIMM RAM, and it's fully user replaceable. I believe you can actually pick this up in a 16 gigabyte variant also. Also. This has a 500 gigabyte M.2 SSD, and again, they offer a few different variants, a bit higher on the storage side of things. Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0 built in, and right out of the box, this is running Windows 11, but you can always downgrade if you feel the need to. We do have a little bit of upgradability with this mini PC. We can add a 2.5 inch mechanical or SSD drive. It does come with the mounting brackets for us. One thing that B-Link's been doing with all of their mini PCs is adding name brand RAM and storage. So for this, we do have some Crucial RAM and Kingston storage. This little plate here looks like a little hard drive bracket, but it's actually the M.2 cooler. And this does support two M.2 drives. So they do make it really easy to upgrade the storage on this unit, whether you want to just add another M.2 or a 2.5 inch drive. So I'm really excited to see how this tiny PC performs, and we're going to get into the operating system, we'll run some benchmarks, test out some PC games and emulation in this video, but first things first, I want to get right into some gaming and see what it can do just straight out of the box. So we're going to go with Forza Horizon 5. And so far, Horizon 5 is performing really well on this little mini PC. We're at 900p with a low medium mix, and I'm getting an average of 76 FPS out of this. I also tried it at 1080p, and it will do 63 on average, 1080p, all low settings. Or, if you don't mind playing this game at 30fps, you can go right into the settings, take it up to high, 1080p, and lock it at 30. It's going to run at 30 all day long with those high settings. But personally, I prefer playing this game at 60 or over, so I don't mind going down to 900p, and I could probably take a few more of these settings up to medium. So far, actually impressed with the performance, but this is the only game I've tested so far. So what I'm going to do is just install some more stuff, then we'll get into some benchmarks, more gaming, and emulation. Just a quick look at the BIOS. We're basically fully unlocked here. We can't overclock the RAM or overclock the chip itself because it is locked down by AMD, but we can up the TDP from here. And if you do end up picking something like this up, I would go into the BIOS, AMD CVS, head over to NBIO, SMU common options, and we can change to performance mode. This is going to get you the best performance out of this. You can always go to 35 watts, but at 45, this does run a bit higher and it's just going to perform much better. Fan will be a bit louder because it's going to produce more heat, but it's totally worth it with this mini PC. All right, so I've been up and running for a little while. I've got a lot of games, benchmarks, and some emulators that we're going to be testing out. As you can see, we have that Ryzen 9 5900HX. 
8 cores, 16 threads, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz, and the built-in Radeon 8 graphics up to 2100 megahertz. The very first thing I wanted to take a look at was what the TDP on the CPU is set at out of the box. Now we're in performance mode from the BIOS, which will up that TDP a bit, giving us better performance on these APUs on the CPU and GPU side of things. So I'm going to run a quick stress test with Prime95. And over here in Core Temp, I know it's an older app, but it does work out quite well. We're at about 64 watts, which seems really good for the 5900HX. Now it's time to move over to some benchmarks. And first up, we have Geekbench 5. This is the best score that I've seen out of a mobile Ryzen chip. Single core coming in at 1,524, multi 8,443. Remember, we're in performance mode and this is running up to 65 watts. I also ran a couple GPU benchmarks using 3D Mark, and first up we have Night Raid with a total score of 17,143. I also ran Fire Strike, and we got a 3,972. Not bad at all. Not bad at all for integrated graphics. You know, I do a lot of APU testing over here, and this is looking really decent for a mobile APU with an iGPU. But now, let's see how this thing really handles PC gaming. Here we have Halo Infinite, and going into this one I knew we weren't going to be able to do this at 1080p 60, and even 1080p 30 might be pushing it. But at 900p with the lowest settings, I got an average of 36 FPS out of this. At 720p on the lowest settings, you can get an average of around 43, but I wanted to up the res just a little bit. Next up, we have GTA 5, 1080p, normal settings, and believe it or not, this is actually some of the best performance that I've seen out of these Ryzen APUs. Basically, any of the mini PCs that I've tested with the mobile APUs, this is definitely performing much better, because with those, we had to take it down to around 900p, but on the 5900HX and the GR9, we're getting an average of 68. Project Cars 2 actually did pretty decent, but we are with a low medium mix, and by that mix we have car detail set to medium, track detail set to medium, and everything else is at low. 900p, we got an average of 63 FPS. I was actually hoping to get a bit more out of this, and at 720p you definitely can, but this is just a harder one to run on iGPUs. This tiny PC handled MK11 way better than I thought it would. We're at 900p medium settings and it's going to run at 60 just fine. You can actually take this up to 1080p and drop it down to low and still get 60 out of it. Here's Doom Eternal. I always like testing this out on the APUs. It does give these little chips a run for its money. And with this one here, we're at 720p with dynamic resolution scale on. We're trying to get to that 75 FPS mark with dynamic resolution scale, and it'll definitely do it at 720p. And finally, for the PC gaming side of things, we have God of War. Now with this one, we do have that Fidelity FX that we can turn on. I'm at 720p with that set to performance, and we still can't hit 60 with it. But if you wanted to take this up to around 900p, you could definitely lock it at 30 and still have a really enjoyable experience. But I was still impressed to see this get an average of 51 FPS, 720p, low settings. I mean, it's a brand new release, and we're getting really close with games like these on APUs. I also wanted to throw a little bit of emulation at this unit, and if you're really interested in it, I can do a full emulation test on this thing. We have PlayStation 2 using PC SX2, DirectX 11 back in, 1440p, you're not going to have any trouble running any game as long as it's compatible with said emulator. I also tested out some original Xbox emulation using CXBX Reloaded. I took this up to 720p and we're getting a constant 60. This is actually looking really good. I tested DOA3 and Jet Set Radio, same performance. This one just always gave me trouble on other APUs. And finally, at least for this video, we have some PS3 using RPCS3. Skate 3 is really my go-to test because it does stress out that CPU. 
we're sitting at around 64 watts while this is running. It does get a bit hotter than normal. We're at 84 degrees Celsius, but it is capable of running this game here at 60 FPS. So this is definitely a higher wattage mobile APU than we usually deal with, you know, with the 5500Us and things like that. This is the HX variant. And with these tiny PCs, I always like to check out total system power consumption from the wall using a kilowatt meter. At idle, this pulls around 19 watts. Average gaming, we're sitting around 67. And the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall while maxing out the GPU and CPU was 81 watts. And keep in mind, this is in performance mode from the BIOS. When it comes to CPU temps, idle were around 34, average gaming 72, and in my Cinebench R23 test, which runs for 10 minutes, we hit 88 degrees Celsius. Now this isn't thermal throttle, but it's getting real close. And once we hit around 80 degrees Celsius, these little fans do kick up, and it's about as loud as a little gaming laptop. But overall, I think the dual fan cooler that they have set up does a great job of cooling the 5900HX. So in the end, the all-new B-Link GR9, powered by the Ryzen 9 5900HX, is a great little mini PC. I mean, this thing is definitely packing some really good CPU power. We've got decent GPU performance here, but, you know, after all, we're still dealing with an iGPU, and this is still based on Vega. We have a higher clock with that Radeon 8, and it does make a little bit of a difference, but it doesn't have anything on a dedicated GPU like a GTX 1650, and going into this, I wasn't expecting that kind of performance. But the way it sits right now with the GR9, this is definitely one of the most powerful mini PCs that I've tested with a mobile Ryzen APU installed. I have tested a very similar mini PC, it's actually a bit larger than this with the same exact Ryzen 9 5900HX, and it seems that the GR9 in real world performance is just working a bit better than that one. And it could definitely come down to newer drivers, but overall, I think this is a great little performing mini PC. And if you're interested in learning more about it, I'm going to leave a few links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the GR9, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.